Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and sometimes we cover topics that seem a little bit outside the realm of our usual, and that's because they happen to be things that affect all content creators on this platform, or potentially could. We, we talked about like Philip Mewson, YouTuber hired by IGN that ended up, you know, we, we <laughs> honestly, I really don't want to go back down that, uh, that rabbit hole, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, just type in Philip Mewson into uh, YouTube and you will see clearly what he did and how he lost his job at IGN uh, for committing the cardinal sin in journalism and being massively guilty for it previously on his YouTube channel. Now, setting that aside, I've also covered other things over the years that uh, I just deemed as, as, as something not morally correct or uh, or whatever. And I'm prefacing all this because we're going to be talking about a YouTube channel uh, called Quantum TV. This YouTube channel seems to focus primarily on uh, reviewing TVs and, and and setting settings for various TVs. He claims in, in his about section about something about saving people money or whatever. And occasionally he does reviews of games as well. And uh, it was one particular review that actually seemed to started all of this, although allegations against Quantum TV have existed for some time. Uh, but the reason we're talking about this is because what he's doing and the way he's abusing the YouTube platform is... Something that YouTube needs to correct and needs to correct now, not just in dealing with this particular person, but everyone who's abusing the YouTube platform in this way. Now, before I get into this, I want to know that this video is sponsored by Into the AM. They make beautiful shirts like this, awesome custom printed tees. Uh, you can actually go to their website down below and link in the description and use the code Nintendo. Prime 10 to save 10% off of your order. Uh, they have just basic color shirts if you just want basic colors or undershirts. They also make these. They're really soft, and these are some of the highest quality prints I've ever seen. I actually have a you know a bevy of these. I think I have over 20 of these Into the AM shirts that I, I rotate into my daily wear. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Into the AM, and I want to thank them so much for supporting the channel and sponsoring us. All right, so look. Here's the background with Quantum TV. Here's what I was able to just figure out on my own after watching a whole bunch of videos, digging into Reddit threads. The, the general gist of it is this. There, here's something I'm not going to do in this video. Some of you know the Quantum TV situation. I'm not going to be digging into his content and how he makes that content, right? There's accusations against him of claiming to be a specialist in the field when he's not. There's claims that he, he's stealing settings from other creators for the TVs. Which again, I'm not going to dive into that stuff because frankly, it's out of my depth and not something that is really my concern. Lots of YouTubers throughout research end up using other people's settings, other people's content. I don't really find this to be a problem per se, even though you should accredit that stuff. That's why we put sources down in the description. I'm going to source a couple big videos I've used from like the Ackman and Review Tech USA uh, in some of my research here because I really don't want to link to anything from Quantum TV himself. Uh, but anyways, the point is that Quantum TV has basically been abusing the copyright system, and that's what I want to focus on. Um, I'm not going to necessarily focus on some of the other accusations against him, uh, but because there's things, there's a lot out there. There's things about you know, him being a transphobe or a bigot, or I, I honestly don't want to get into any of that stuff. Uh, I will leave that to these other channels uh, that are trying to get him kicked off the platform, but I think the biggest reason that Quantum TV needs to be kicked off the platform is his abuse of the copyright system and potentially even falsely accusing YouTube of suggesting that he abused the system. Um, and this sucks because it's really scary. And it really started when he made a review of Elden Ring. And in his review of Elden Ring, he says some pretty nasty things. Not just about the game, but about the people who play Elden Ring. And that's really what set some other content creators off, is, hey, it's one thing if you don't like Elden Ring. No one's really going to have a huge issue if you don't like Elden Ring. They might disagree with you and make some responsive videos to that. But you can't talk about the people who play Elden Ring and say nasty things about those people and then, you know, think that that's okay. And to be fair, he has since deleted this video, and I'm not going to go up and, and, and find re-uploads of it anywhere because it's just not worth my damn time, if I'm completely honest. I've seen enough clips that uh, the clips alone, even without the full context, are not okay. I don't really care if it was a joke. You don't say these things about people who play games. So that seemed to be the focus of a YouTuber called Mischief, who responded uh, to his review and basically you know, critiqued 
uh, and using clips from his review, critiqued uh, his opinions on Elden Ring and the Elden Ring players. And Mischief didn't like this. Or I shouldn't say Mischief. Quantum TV didn't like this. And he decided to copyright strike his video. And then copyright strike another one, and another one, and another one. And obviously, this is a small YouTuber. Uh, at the time, he only had like 7,000 subscribers. And this is very scary when you're at this size because copyright claims and copyright strikes can get your channel deleted off YouTube. And sometimes when you, unfortunately, this is just the truth of YouTube, when you're that small and you dispute these claims, sometimes the YouTube manual reviews will just dismiss those claims. Thankfully, in this case, they didn't, and those claims were all dismissed by YouTube. Uh, but along the way, he started attacking this person who happens to actually be a minor, 16 years old. Uh, and apparently, do he doesn't care that he's going after a minor. He just keeps going at him over and over and over again across multiple videos. And if this was where the story ended, I would probably leave it alone. Because honestly, it seems like beef between two YouTube content creators. And at that point, I am just don't really care. But that's not where the story ends. Review Tech USA decides to uh, make a make a little um, fuss about this. It didn't really go super in depth in his very first video on it. Uh, just kind of said, "Hey, like I don't, I don't know that this is really okay, and that you should be treating people this way, and you definitely shouldn't be false copywriting uh, videos." Goes after Review Tech USA and co false copyrights his video, which Review Tech USA easily won that dispute. Then he starts trash talking Review Tech USA for even critiquing him. Oh, but it gets even better. So a massive YouTuber called, I think, The Act Man. I don't really watch his content, so I don't know a lot about him. But he decided to use clips from the Elden Ring review to critique his takes on this. And Quantum TV claims that YouTube told him to copyright strike his video. Here is the exact words Quantum TV wrote himself in response to the act ma'am. It was YouTube support who recommended I copyright claim your video because you re-uploaded clips of my original deleted video long after I deleted it from my channel. Naturally, that means it was piracy and could be copyright claimed by the original owner. Or so they claimed. After all, how else does one upload another user's content long after they erase it? I gave them a scolding for bad advice and will seek their options against your piracy of my content. Now, this was the first big thing he did against the Act Man. And I want to show you guys something because I'm a YouTube content creator. I know YouTube's policies because I have to follow them. I agreed to them when I started uploading content. In fact, they remind you of these policies every time you upload a video. But that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at these policies as they're publicly posted. So first, uh, let's talk about fair use. See, this is support.google.com. Google owns YouTube. Um, so here's what they describe fair use as in regards to uh, YouTube in the YouTube help section. They say fair use is a legal doctrine that says you can reuse copyrighted protected material under certain circumstances without the copyright owner's permission. In the United States, which is where this is all taking place, only a court can decide what qualifies as fair use, which is true. You can start a lawsuit over everything, but the court will ultimately determine if it's fair use. Courts rely on four factors, and then they link to uh, you know the, the, the fair use cop policy. Uh, and it says the purpose of character of the use, the nature of copyrighted work, the amount of, and sustainability of the copyrighted work used, and the effect of the potential market for a value for the copyrighted work. Now, this is cool. This is neat. You could argue that, yeah, maybe it, it, it goes against fair use in a certain case here because it's copyrighted work of his. And maybe it's being used in a way that, that he deems not right. But he deleted that work, right? So what, what, what's the problem with this? Well, there's a problem with this because... Something I haven't seen anybody point out is how when you upload a video to YouTube, you give up certain rights to your content. And that includes the rights for other YouTubers to use your content. Here it is in the YouTube Terms of Service. First, you have your license to YouTube. By providing content to the service, this means anything you upload. You grant YouTube, now this is obviously YouTube, he's not arguing against YouTube, a worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free, sub-licensable, transferable license that, to use that content, including to reproduce, distribute, repair, derivative works, display, and perform it in connection with the service and YouTube and its successors' affiliates. So basically, YouTube can use any video uploaded to YouTube as they see fit. Okay, fine. That's, I mean, duh, it's their, it's their platform. Of course you can. License to other users. You also grant each user of the service a world. So each user of the service, that's me. That's you. You guys watching this video, commenting, you guys uploading videos, you are a user of the YouTube service. You grant each user of the service, and this is by uploading the video, non-exclusive, royalty-free, so you don't get to collect money, 
you don't you don't get exclusive rights to access your content through the service. Okay, that's to watch it and to use that content, including to reproduce, distribute, prepare, deriv prepare derivative works, display, and perform it only as enabled by the features of the service, such as video playback or embeds. For clarity, this license does not grant any permission for a user to make use of your content on an inde independent of the service. So you can't like take his video and put it on Twitch. You can't take his video and go to Daily Motion or whatever. You could only use this video and use his content, re-upload it, do whatever you want on YouTube. YouTube's own terms of service state anything you upload to YouTube, other people can do whatever the hell they feel like. All right. Uh, the license granted is, is, is it continued to be a commercially reasonable period of time after you remove or delete the content from the service, meaning it does not matter. It's irrelevant if you deleted it off the service. If it appeared on the service at any point, it can be used. You understand and agree, however, YouTube will, may retain but not display, distribute, or perform ser uh, server copies of your video that have been removed or deleted. So basically, YouTube might not ever bring your video back. They're not going to stop other people from bringing it back. Um, it has to be a, a commercially reasonable period of time. Elden Ring isn't that old, so it's fair to say that we are well within the commercially reasonable time of the Elden Ring product. So that would mean that your video is still within there. Uh, and then you have a right to monetize and, and, and all of that stuff when talking about your own personal stuff. So what I find interesting in this, obviously, is that he's not only you know, not correct in the fair use sense. He's also not correct in that YouTube would ever tell him to go after a channel for using clips from his video because YouTube explicitly states they can do this. They explicitly state you are allowed to do this, that by uploading your content to YouTube, you give the right to other YouTubers to do that. There's literally nothing that this guy can defend um, for not doing this, but he doesn't. He doesn't, he, he doesn't stop there. Like, this is what's crazy about him. And, and this really, again, the act man is the, the big, the big culprit here. Sorry, I got to drag this up quick. I, I didn't actually prepare this. I wasn't going to talk about it. But dude, the act man, the way he's going after him is, is crazy. Because the act man is by far the biggest content creator to call him out. And it's just, let, let, let's just, I'm just going to show you the, the, the Twitter feed. This is insane. Um, so imagine being lectured on gun violence by a dude who has said that only 49 people were killed. And I'm not going to get into the politics here, but look at this. I reached out to your mother. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Why? When do you ever reach out to family? That's harassment. That's harassment. This is beyond just false copyright claims. You're harassing someone's personal life. So I reached out to your mother to convey the severity of real-world harm you have been causing through your social media actions. Basically, I don't like that I'm being called out. So I'm going to get your mom on the phone. Your mom's going to scold you. Mommy, please take care of this for me, please. Oh my gosh, I had to, as a grown adult, go to another man's mother to get him to, you know, spank another grown adult. Like, oh my god. What, what is this guy doing? What even is this? I've never, this is the level of stupidity. I've never seen. Um, I in no way threatened your mother or family. No, you, you only told your mother that he's a bad person and you should take care of this. Um, I definitely never issued a veiled threat, but now you're calling for ACT Bros to unite ACT Mother's Honor. This is officially turned into a criminal activity. This is a direct call for an uprising and a threat of gun violence against me. Which, to be fair, the ad man said if, uh, if he ever shows up on his property, there's going to be a problem, which... I mean, yeah, the Atman feels kind of threatened by him, so uh, maybe just don't show up at his house. That that would probably be a, a smart move. I'm I'm just saying. Um, we've seen cases like this in the past where where, where such things were were threatened, like when people showed up at Boogie Two Nine Eight's house, and then he literally fired a gun. And I'm not saying that he should have, but it's one of those things that he warned him, "Do not come to my house. Like that's private, personal property. Do not show up at my house." And he did. So there's that. Um, these death threats are not okay, which, again, it's a threat to protect himself by you invading his private personal space. Um, anyways, and given the conversation I had with your mother, I figured you'd leave me alone, but there's yet another extremely manipulative post calling for unity as you threaten gun violence. I'll be sending this to the authorities. Okay. Um, here he says, I can confirm that Quantum TV's threatening me and my family with doxing and violence. He even reached out to my mother saying, and this is something the mother quoted, 
We wouldn't want families to get hurt or involved in this as he's literally involving the guy's mother. He's literally involving his mom. But he's going to have the audacity to say this. I wish I was joking. If we see you, Quantum, we shoot on sight. And, and, and that's, you know, that, that's just, you know, I, I don't know that I would go that far. That's a bit extreme to say that. But uh, here's a, a text from his mom. Try it, but not from anything he can connect with you. Mother says be safe. Mom says he's a nut. So the mother is, is basically, this is just proof of the mom basically saying, hey, um, this guy's not right. There's something not right in here. Um, and then he makes veiled threats of violence in his latest video around 1720, which again, I'm not going to watch any of Quantum TV's content. Um, you want to copyright Stephanie Bro, come at me. It's not really, it's not really going to do anything. Um, you guys are going to get someone killed. Um, and that's what he says in there. Yeah, bro, it's going to be you if you do anything. Can someone at YouTube ax this guy now? Um, moving on down, we, we can see this is kind of cool where Mischief has actually grown and become a bigger YouTuber than Quantum just in terms of subscriber growth. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. That the whole controversy actually ended up being a positive for mischief. Um, so then uh, he he puts up a whole video about this, which I'm going to link tomorrow uh, or link tomorrow, link below, and I'm going to link some videos from Review Tech USA. Um, and said that this is something um, that Quantum TV actually said. <laughs> um, this is on a Reddit thread. Let's just read this. Let's just read this. I want to thank everyone for sticking with me. It's obvious most of these other reviewers, like Stop the FOMO, Digital Trends, and HDTV Test, are just Satanists. And this, these are people that were accusing him of, of issues with his videos, uh, just his actual TV videos. Every time I see one of their videos, you could tell they are trying to brainwash the masses into the gay, liberal, satanic, atheist agenda. This is quantum TV. One minute, someone could be watching Stop the FOMO. The next minute, they start having anal sex with their dads, doing coke and trying to conjure demons. Again, these are people that criticized his videos. And this is what he's saying about them. Satanic influence isn't a joke. It was obviously already when Stop the FOMO ended by using the Lucifer logo to pray Satan and claimed he was just testing for blooming God. I hate atheists and their satanic rituals. What's funny. And, 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 and other atheists out there, we don't talk about politics and religion on here. I'm, I'm Roman Catholic. But, but being an atheist is the absence of believing in religion, which means you wouldn't believe in Satan. Because to believe in Satan is a religious thing. So, I, I mean, I'm sorry. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about um, being an atheist. But being an atheist is the absence of religion. I, I don't really... Okay. Um, they need an ass kicking from some Christians. Real good Christian behavior. I'm almost ashamed to call you a, a, a Christian. Are, are you a Christian? Uh, again, I'm not going to get into religious stuff. Um, so there's the, he gets, goes into the perjury claims and and all this stuff. And what's what's interesting is that uh, <laughs> Review Tech USA proved another thing about Quantum TV, and that this is actually his second YouTube account. He had a, a different YouTube account where uh, he got banned for hate speech. The channel was literally deleted by YouTube for hate speech, which you I just showed you a, 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 an example of what you could deem hate speech right there, just saw people crit critiquing his videos. And the thing is, once you get banned on YouTube, you get any account permanently deleted by YouTube. It doesn't matter for what reason. It could be a comment you made. It could just be videos you upload. It doesn't matter what the reasoning is. If you get banned by YouTube, you are not allowed, according to YouTube's terms of service, to make another account, and especially make another account and start uploading videos again. His current channel right now is a ban evade channel. It is, I got banned on my original account, I made a new account, and I'm building this account up with uploading content, which is against YouTube's terms of service. And yeah, I, I think the biggest thing here is just trying to get YouTube to take notice. I also want people, I don't want anyone to go, go and attack Quantum TV. Okay, it's really not worth your time, and I'm probably going to join his shit list too for even talking about this, but the bottom line in all of this is not that I care about what his personal interests are and his religious takes, not that I care whether or not he's stealing settings from other uh, YouTube TV content creators, not that 
He's even copyright striked a, a single person for, for, for the Elden Ring stuff. He's copyrighted so many people over the Elden Ring thing. It's ridiculous. And he's breaking YouTube's terms of service. And these are the kind of people that show how broken YouTube is. Bro YouTube has an automated copyright strike system that anybody can use. I can, fall, I, well, I can flag anybody who I want. Any video I want, right now, if you put up a video that I don't like, I can go flag it right now. It takes three clicks, three clicks, and I can flag any video on YouTube and it will get taken down. That's, that shouldn't happen. That's not how the system should work. I understand YouTube is massive and has to have some automation to it, but copyright claims, copyright strikes are Massive. What YouTube should do is fine. Allow anyone to claim copyright or copyright strike, but do not remove content. Do not remove ad revenue until that claim has gone through the dispute process. Give that content creator a set amount of time, say seven days. Give them a week to respond to the claim before taking out the content. And I say this because that gives the content creator time to notice the claim, content creator to decide to respond to it and decide if they want to dispute it. If they don't dispute it after a week, take out the content. I think that's totally fair. And that allows the automated system to exist and also gives the content creator time to dispute it before anything happens. Wouldn't it be grand if Quantum TV comes and he copyright strikes this very video today and I get seven days to decide if I want to dispute it and it stays up the whole time, it makes money the whole time, just so I could you know, go through the legalese and not have to worry about, hey, if this video is meant to be up, it stays up. I, I just, YouTube, there's a better way. Susan Wojcicki, there's a better way. People like this shouldn't be able to get, I mean, the fact that he's being called up by these, these big YouTubers and it still hasn't had anything taken care of. The fact that this person is talking the way they're talking, threatening violence, calling other content creators mothers. How the hell he even got a hold of his mother? I have no idea. That alone probably took some doxing just to get the mother's phone number. I'm just, this infuriates me. And it affects all of us here on YouTube. And um, yeah, I don't really plan to talk about this much more. We, we, might, we might bring it up briefly on the podcast tonight. Uh, just because I want to get other people's thoughts. I want to get Eric's thoughts. I want to get uh, Nintendo Academy's thoughts on this because this, this impacts content creators. Um, but I'm going to, I'm bringing attention to it because at this time, nothing's happened. Quantum TV is still a able to sit there and spew lies. He's still able to upload his videos. Um, he's still able to just go, go about his business. Uh, nothing's happened. YouTube's taking no action. So the more of us content creators that draw attention to this, the more likely it is that Quantum TV's channel will finally get noticed by YouTube. And, uh, I mean, ban evading alone is enough to get rid of it. False copyright strikes are enough to get rid of it. And that's without even critiquing his content. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Nintendo Robot Gents from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.